Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Morrowind. Uh, since last time I sold a bunch of stuff to Errol, I kept all the armor for later, uh, and uh, I'm back in this cave because I neglected to get some things, so uh, let's get those. Now, this video is going to be pretty long, I, I suspect, because there's a lot of things I want to do. Uh, this is going to be sort of like a miscellaneous uh, globe-trotting video um, where I try to get a bunch of the core spells that uh, I feel are important. Um, so we're going to be going to a bunch of different cities and it's, these are going to be like little previews before we actually get to do a lot of things in those cities. Uh, I'm, I'm planning on just kind of targeting certain areas and certain NPCs just to show you who they are and where they are. And if I can ever get up this stupid rock to this chest, okay. There's a spooks of restore strength, a bit of gold, and a spoon. That's what I came for. Right here. And there's another thing that I missed. Up here. Now, you know, you remember I went here before, but there's a small item that I neglected to get that's very difficult to see, uh, so I, I missed it the first run through that I forgot about, um, but I remembered between these videos, oh man, I actually totally forgot to get that, that item, so uh, I'm going to show you where that is, and hopefully you won't have already gotten it if you're watching along. Okay. Okay. Get, get up there. Come on, buddy. Yeah. There you go. You can do this. Just sort of swim onto this platform. From underwater. It's really weirdly designed. I'm not a big fan of it, to be honest, but anyway. Okay. So, for this, we want to equip this torch here so that we can see a little better. And it should be. It's not here. I forget exactly where it is. torch we can get. It's near the rib cage, I remember that. I guess this is the rib cage. There we go. The thief ring lets you fortify several of your uh, skill points. It's very it's not very valuable but it's actually pretty decent for the beginning of the game. So definitely try to get that this that ring while you're here. Uh, might as well get this box since I sold all that stuff over there. And so I'm just gonna head make my way out of the cave and I'll meet you back at the entrance. What is this? Back about? in Sedanine and uh, I'm decided to make a l another little pit stop here at Errol's store just to buy a few more things. Uh, first thing is you want to buy this frostbite spell. It's just a little damage spell. It's kind of useful. Doesn't cost very much money. So let's buy that. Uh, barter with him, and we'll also get a bow and these hundred arrows. Uh, they're not that expensive, and they're useful just to lure enemies at first and to work on marksmen. Uh, you'll eventually get better bows and stuff like that. And uh, again, I mentioned this last time, but just in case you forget, you have to drop moon sugar and skooma in order to trade with Errol. And that goes for any merchants that are not Khajiit. Khajiits will buy Moon Sugar and Skuma. They're basically the drug dealers of this game. Uh, it's kind of funny, but yeah. So those guys will buy those, uh, those items for you. What is this? You uh, have my attention. One thing I like to do is I like to uh, try to have one merchant in every kind of major city bribed fully and, and easy to trade with. And whenever possible, I try to make that Khajiit. So if there's a Khajiit merchant, I will make that my go-to merchant, no matter how much gold they have. 
just because I can sell them sugar and skooma to them. Um, well, skooma typically I'll sell to creeper, but moon sugar is you can't sell it to creeper. So now we're gonna leave Sedanine. We've spent our entire time uh, Why walk here when you can ride? so far, but it's time to leave. And I always, first before I before I br uh, travel, I always try to get their dispositions up to 100 because it'll, it'll save you money in the long run. Because if you're like me, you tend to use fast travel whenever possible. So to do this, basically, you're gonna spend, you know, uh, you know, hopefully, this won't take too much longer. But you know, here I spent one, two. Three, four, I spent 60 gold, and this reduces her prices by a decent amount. Uh, so it adds up over time, and I'll be coming, and you end up using basically everybody, every single travel person you find fairly often because you use them as waypoints when you're traveling to long distances. So uh, we're gonna first head to. Uh, we're gonna first head. Mm, I guess we'll head first to Balmora. And Why if walk you remember, when you this can is ride? Where Chaos Cassades is. So now we're here in Balmora. Uh, we have a decent amount of money, so we should be okay to buy what we need. Um, and I guess the first thing I'll do is just find Chaos Cassades. He'll give us some money if we're lower than level four. So I might as well just do finish off that quest while I'm here. Uh, it's pretty simple. So let's let's remind ourselves what that quest is all about. A report to case seeds. My orders are to go to the town of Balmora, which we're at, and find him. You should find him at Southwall Corner Corner Club. So let's find the Southwall Corner Club. There's the Southwall Corner Club. So we go in here, and we talk to somebody here. So this woman, Sotold, ask her about case seeds. That old sugar tooth. I'm not sure where he's living now, but ask this guy. Okay, so let's find this guy, Picola Cloisters. There's Bacola Colossus. Talk to him about Chaos Cassades, and he's like, Okay, old Chaos writes a little bed and basket, are just up the hill in the north edge of town, go at the front door, then ride up the stairs, left at the front top of the stairs, and down to the end of the street. So that just basically tells you what house this guy lives in. I guess it's a nice thing that they give you, like a little, uh, little, like, waypoint in, in your first start out, but he's really, really easy to find. I don't know really why they bothered to do the whole South Wall Corner Club thing. So here's Chaos Cassage's house, we go in, and there he is. So this is our first uh, main quest yes? quest giver. What? Yes, I'm Chaos Cassage, but what do you mean you were told to report to me? What are you talking about? So I'm just an old man with a skooma problem. Uh, you know, this is kind of important. Report. So you say your name is Funky Student, and you've been told to report to me and deliver a package. Perhaps you'll let me look at it. I always say yes to this. You can refuse, and his disposition will go down, uh, and you'll get a journal entry. So I'm actually just going to do that just to get the journal entry, but you might as well just say yes. Okay, then we have nothing to talk about until you're ready to give me the package. So now I'm going to give him the package, and this time I'll say I'm not going to take your orders, jerk. Fine, then get out of here. Again, I get another little journal entry. And now I'll say, yeah, okay, good. Well, so you 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 can always just backtrack, even if you say, but it's not it's not a bust, but thou must question exactly. But you can you never are locked out of the main quest by refusing him. Uh, so I'm not gonna take his orders right now. That'll give us the first main quest. Uh, it's not a bad idea if you're already here to just do it, but I'm not gonna do it. Um, I'm going to click on a bunch of these things and go over them. Uh, this is the guy, early, in the last video I mentioned that Elone would be the one who'd talk about, like, uh, you know, Elone would be the one to talk about, like, politics and stuff like that. I was wrong. It is this guy. Uh, he is, he, he, he will talk a lot. So, you know, he, here he gives us all different tra trainers. And this is the main, one of the main reasons I did this so early is because we can get training from all these guys while we travel. Uh, notice that there's one or two guys in every uh, city, and including Elone, who was back in Sydney. Uh, so we talk about them, and he gives us journal updates, telling us where those guys are. 
so, you know, it's useful. Yeah, let's talk to him about the blades. There were spies. So now we're basically like, they're basically like James Bond of this game. Uh, and then you can talk to him about guilds and factions, and it, it'll kind of explode. This, these are all of the joinable factions in the game, and with even with a couple that are not. So, and he's he, and this is like a general overview of sort of uh, what the game is. There's is all about. So basically, this game uh, inside Morrowind, there are imperial interests, and then there are uh, local native Dunmer interests. So. Uh, Morrowind has a lot more autonomy than most of the other provinces in the Empire, uh, so there's a lot of, like, traditional Dunmer houses, and that's why there's slavery and stuff like that, is because the Dunmer uh, signed a treaty with the Empire rather than being absorbed through conquest. So, uh, they have a lot more autonomy, and so a lot of the... Uh, the other the factions that you'll find in other more uh, Elder Scrolls games like Oblivion, for example, uh, you can't join in this game. So the Dark Brotherhood is is a perfect example of that. Uh, it exists obviously because I've been attacked by them, but you can't join them. Uh, there's an equivalent Assassins Guild, which is the Morag Tong, but that is a Morrowind uh, local thing. So let's click on all these and find out. We already talked to him about the blades. And the Imperial Cult is the is the faction I recommend uh, joining immediately and actually doing quests for right away. And the reason is because um, they give you... It's very simple. It's very newbie friendly. Uh, there are four quest givers for the faction, and they're all in one room. And three of them give you quests all at the same time. So you can get, like, three quests at once, and you can uh, and two of them are and they're all kind of different styles of quests one of them is like a gathering sort of quest like so you go out and you gather like ingredients and you bring them back for rewards and they give you like you know they kind of teach you how to do alchemy and stuff like that the other one is like is all kind of disposition sort of style quests like speechcraft and mercantile style quests where you're trying to get money out of people and you end up getting a decent amount of money and, and, and uh, enchanted items from that those quests. And the third one is more traditional where you're kind of killing monsters and stuff like that. It's probably, it's it's the best house for beginners, undeniably. Uh, the Imperial Legion is one of my favorite factions in the region just because I like legions and I like Romans. But, and I like, I hated the fact that in the later games you can't join the Imperial Legion. It made no sense to me, really, because I didn't understand why you couldn't join the guards. They were everywhere in those games. So, um... Now, the Fighters Guild and the Mages Guild and the Thieves Guild are all kind of self-explanatory. They're basically... They give you quests aimed towards these kinds of things. Fighting, ma uh, magic, and thieves. You can do all three of them, though. They're not, like, mutually exclusive. Uh, and I recommend doing them all. Uh, the major, they're all pretty good. Uh, the Fighters Guild's probably, I, I don't know, they're all, they all start up pretty easy. The Thieves Guild I really recommend being a member of because they have this, they let you do this thing uh, where basically you can join the Thieves Guild and then if you get, if you have a, cr a criminal record or a bounty, uh, you can go to there and pay half of what you pay for the bounty and you will, it'll expunge your record. It's really useful. Okay, uh, and then those are the Imperial interests, and the rest are Morrowind exclusive faction. They're not in any of the other games, so uh, there's the three great houses, Redoran, uh, Hlalu, and Telvanni. Um, you can only join one of these houses, so you, you either need to um, save before making your decision, and then you can like reload that save and play all of them, or you can... Um, I'm going to end up showing all three. Uh, but, you know, one, only one of them is going to be canon for my character. Uh, and it's sort of like a Fighters, Mages, Thieves uh, distinction. Fighters Guild is kind of like House Redoran. They're more like the Warriors. Uh, Hlalu is more like the Thieves. They're kind of more tricky. And House Tavani is like the Mages. House Tavani is my favorite of the three because the they're nuts. Uh, they're completely hilarious and crazy. Um, 
and it's just a ton of fun. One of my favorite factions in in, in any of the uh, Elder Scrolls games. Uh, and finally, we hang on. Yeah, uh, let's talk about the temple also next. So the temple is kind of the local version. Uh, it's a native religion. So they worship the three god kings, Almalexia, Sothisil, and Vivek. You'll meet all three of those characters uh, in this game. Well, at least if you have Tribunal. Uh, they're, they're the Tribunal, that's what they're called. Um, and they're kind of like the Imperial Cult, except much more difficult. So I actually don't like to join the temple for a while, because the main quest in the main quest, you end up kind of going against the temple for maybe the first half of it. And so you'll end up in situations where it's pretty easy to break the rules and they'll kick you out of the temple if you're a member and doing that. So I don't like to join it until after I've, I'm a certain certain uh, length into the main quest. Although there are good benefits for joining it early on because you do this pilgrimage that gets you some pretty good uh, armor. Um, the Morag Tong is the Assassin's Guild. Uh, it's completely legal unlike the Dark Brotherhood and it's really, really neat. Uh, basically... In order to join them, well, I can show you how to join them. It's pretty, it's really, it's probably the hardest guild to actually join. You have to locate the guild master and he's well hidden. Um, but I'm going to probably show you how to join eventually, uh, not, not right away. Uh, and what, what you'll do is you'll get uh, just writs. And basically what it is, is you go over to, it tells you, okay, kill this person, it tells you where they are, you go kill them, and then the guards will say, oh, you killed this person, you just give them the writ, and they're like, okay, well, that's fine, you killed them. And it's pretty cool, you're basically like a, a paid assassin. Um, I really like the Morag Tong, it's a lot of fun. Last guild is the Kimona Tong, and they're impossible to join. Uh, this is the only, uh, and also the Ashlanders, uh, the Kimona Tong is, is basically like, a, a, a mafia version of the Thieves Guild, and they they despise Outlanders, which is what you are. Uh, so they're really you'll end up going up against them, and they're really they're really horrible, like tough to deal with. Um, they're they're serious business, and they're kind of like an enemy faction as well as the Dark Brotherhood is too. It, like the Dark Brotherhood is the enemy of the Morag Tong. Kumona Tong is the enemy of the Thieves Guild. The Ashlanders are like the basically like Native Americans. They're like native Dunmer who live on this island that have not assimilated into uh, the Imperial way, and they don't live in towns. They live in like little camps, and we'll go out there, and you have to walk to those camps. Um, but you can join them as part of the main quest, and it's really di it's it takes a long time to do, and it's kind of hard to do. It's it's, it's where the main quest gets difficult is when you try to join them, um, but eventually you'll just as part of the main quest you'll join them so the lake servant is what you do with the imperial halt and he talks about you know this is where he tells you where the quest givers are Sinolian Tunifus, Iulius Triptor, and Kay uh, so you know you're a lay healer, a, an almoner, fundraiser and the starting charge is more dangerous jobs that's what we're gonna do next video we're gonna be join the imperial cult and start to do with some of those quests now, for now, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna mention my orders to him. So he tells us, you know, we're new. Here's 200 drakes. Go get us a deep some weapon armor. He tells us to join one of these factions and look for freelance work. I'm not gonna take his next orders. I just wanted the gold in the journal entry. So this is going to be an important area, um, but not. Like that. So now we're gonna go to the next area I want to go to, which is across the river here and the majority of Bamora is over here this is just like a residential area and that's where Chaos Cassades is so it ends up being pretty important but there's a lot of cool stuff over here and yeah so Bamora is the second largest city in the game and it isn't really actually that large Vivek is way way bigger uh, it's by far the largest as I mentioned so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to this guy, Revere. He's a trader. And we're going to make him our arrow of this area. He has, a, he has also some Daedric weapons to sell. Uh, we're not going to probably buy those from him. But 
we just bribe him all the way to 100, it's very, it's, it'll end up being worthwhile. Because he, he can give us quick cash infusion if we need it. And he also will buy moon sugar from us. So, that's really useful. As I mentioned, Khajiits will buy anything. They don't care. And this is taking a long time. And a lot of gold. Like I said, this is all luck based. Okay. Um, I'll be back. We'll... Once, once I get to 100, I'll be back. So, don't worry about it. Okay, we're back, and that didn't take any time at all. I actually got a persuasion, um, a speechcraft skill up while doing that. So, now we're gonna barter with him. Uh, he has some enchanted weapons here. This fiend katana is actually alright, but we can get a better weapon in a minute, so I'm not gonna worry about it. Uh, we want to sell him our moon sugar primarily, but we'll do that after selling, doing the, the bartering trick you know, once with the limeware platter until we can get, you know, an optimal amount of money. So that, that just happened where my offer was refused. You see how his disposition goes down every time. But if you say goodbye and, sit and talk to him again, it just goes back to 100. So you never really, it's not really a problem. So I'm just going to say 501. He'll eventually say yes. And then we'll buy it back for about 470. So we don't actually get that much profit off this this time. And as our mercantile skill goes up, it'll be easier and easier. Uh, let's just sell in this moon sugar while we're not done. So, we get a nice 390 gold off of it. Maybe not quite. Alright, he's not willing to do that. So, selling in this moon sugar. So this guy will be uh, our go-to guy for moon sugar selling, most likely for the entire game. Um, so, but this, that's why I wanted to show you him. Now we'll go to the next place that I need to go to. And that is up here. And Belmore is a pretty big place. This is uh, Hlalu Council. So this is, if you want to join House Hlalu, this is where you go. This is a House Hlalu controlled town, by the way. Each town is controlled by either the Imperials or one of the three houses. Here's a Morag Tong Guild, but we're not a member of that, so we can't do much with it. Um, I'm going to go to both of these stores, the Fine Clothier and this Alchemist. This Fine Clothier, I just, I'm not going to bother bribing her, I just want to get an extravagant amulet. And I'll explain why in a moment. And here we want to go to this alchemist. And we want to just buy a... Okay, well, we have skooma, so she won't sell us to anything. We have to drop the skooma. Hi. Okay, we want to buy the standard potion of invisibility. And I, I only come here, I don't come here very often, so I'm not I that suppose I could spare a moment overcharged. or two. So, okay, now we've got the uh, standard potion of invisibility, so we're going to use it immediately. And we need to go back across the river here. Also, a word about these boxes. Uh, they have stuff in them that you can take for free, and also you can store a lot of things in them. So what I end up doing is I, I, I commandeer um, a box you may outside the South Wall Corner Club. And the reason I do that is it's near Cassades, it's uh, near Thieves Guild. South Wall Corner Club is also the headquarters of the Thieves Guild. Uh, the Thieves Guild always meets in, in, in bars and stuff. So anytime you see like a pub, I know that's you. a Thieves Guild area. So South Wall Corner Club, those boxes over there, I make like a storage area. For myself and I usually have a mark spell right next to them so that I can deposit things into them and then I can you know go sell them or whatever uh, and the thieves guild is right there so I can uh, I can just go into it and 
pay off any bounty I have. And then I can get Chaos Kaseida's new quest. Now here's a lot of free weapons. You can get, you know, free stuff on the wall here. As long as that, you see that stealth thing in the bottom there? Uh, it goes on and off. As long as that is showing a hand grabbing a bag, that means you can steal it and there'd be no consequences. There's a guard right here, so just be aware of that. Outland. And how are you, Mr. Guard? Notice he's a Klaalu guard. So, this is why I came, though. I don't care about those weapons there. I am interested in this weapon here, the Sword of White Woe. Notice how good this thing is, and notice how much it's, what its value is. 17,000, and it can do up to 26 damage with, any, with a chop. Uh, it's a very good weapon, and it's very easy to get. The reason I got this invisibility potion is, no, well, wherever it is, is just to get it. So right now I'm invisible. I can steal it. The second I steal it, I'm not invisible anymore. But I got the weapon, and I don't have to, I don't lose it. So now I have the Sword of White Woe, and that will be my main weapon for a very long time. So, now we've got a good weapon. So we need to get our core spells now. Masera. And to do that, I always, well, where else would you start but with the Mages Guild? So... We're gonna go to the Balmor Mages Guild first. Fight well. And the Mages Guild is you might have noticed it when I was here before, but here's the Fighters Guild, and here's the Mages Guild. And all of these people sell stuff. Um, I will mention that my my next. I don't know if I my, can help you, my but main, I'll try. Uh, monetary goal is to do this and is to enchant that extravagant amulet I, I got. So I bought this extravagant amulet you may remember just a minute ago. I always like to enchant it with a with a spell of um, unlock and it usually costs about 11,000 gold. And once I do that I'll have a, a, an amulet that's really useful that can unlock any door and I always call it the riddle key. Um, and that is my next like major goal um, is to get that. So this guy sells a bunch of really useful spells. He sells levitate, he sells water walking, and water breathing. And we're gonna get all those spells from him. And he also sells Undusi's open door. We're gonna get all of those from him. Uh, a lot of these are pretty useful, but I'm not too worried about them. So that guy just we just bought four critical spells. I also like to look at um her and I get fire bite from her, and I get feather. Feather is useful in a pinch and paralysis. You want all of those spells? How interesting! A tourist. Okay. Now she is another person that has spells. We want soul trap from her, and now we are kind of running low on money, so I'm going to make a pit stop on Caldera. Yes. Uh, in Caldera, there is, um, well, Creeper is in Caldera. That's the main good, good thing day. about Caldera. Let's do business. But there's also this, and this is another key thing that I always do early in the game. I go up here, and there is this little hidden area that has Master's Mortar and Pestle, Master's Calcinator, Master's Retort, and a Master's Albemic. And you'll note that the value on all of that stuff you know, the Mortar and Pestle is 2,400, and Retort's 480, this is 240, and this is 1,200. I don't like to sell them until I can get Grandmaster's ones, because they're actually really high-quality uh, alchemical things. Now I'm over-encumbered, so I need to sell, I need to drop something. Uh, I guess I'll just drop the Retort and the um, Calcinator for now. I'll be back, I can get those later. Um, so... You know, we'll just, and we can take all these things that, that are worth a decent amount. So we'll we'll be back for the rest of that stuff. But I always get that stuff, and I tend to keep it for a really long time until I can get Grandmaster stuff. I mean, just very high quality and useful. Good uh, day. Let's do business. In my way. Anyway, uh, these guys don't really have what any is this super about? useful spells. So I'm not worrying about that. 
Now, Caldera has two things of note for me right now, other than what I just stole. One of which is Creeper, and he is kind of... He's probably the second best merchant in the entire game. Uh, there's one other merchant that I will show you eventually that is better than Creeper, but there Creeper many is far, far, the far cities. more easily accessible than that, uh, that, uh, that merchant, and here he is. He's a scamp. He's a, actually a monster that doesn't attack you, and you barter with him, and he'll buy anything that is not an alchemical ingredient or like a piece of clothes for full value. So, for example, this Dark Brotherhood's boots value is 500. I'll sell it for that. Oh, well, the reason that that's not selling for max is because it's damaged a little. So, but this one, which is damaged a little less, will sell for 480. Agree. We can sell this Curios here for that, and I'm gonna sell one of each to him. Okay, now he's we're selling him that all this stuff. I'm gonna send it, sell him Nucius's cursed ring for full value. Uh, I'll sell him all these random daggers that are useless, throwing stars that I don't care about. Basically, Creeper is is the pl person I go to dump all my items. Uh, and you know these bottles, and these bowls, um, anything that I don't have any real use for. Torch. I guess he doesn't buy that. So he also buy the skooma for her month out, like 500 each. So Creeper is, needless to say, Creeper is the man. Uh, he's the best, you know, he's extremely good. And you can even sell it for a little lot more than uh, its actual value. So I just got, that's my gold worries. I don't need to worry about gold for a little while. I can go and that, that basically just financed my next little, the next little part of my shopping spree. So now that we've gotten we sold all, all our Dark Brotherhood stuff to Creeper, and again, like, the Dark Brotherhood you might not have. If you don't have it, don't worry too much. You should be able to sell all the stuff you got in uh, Adam Asardis for a decent amount of money, and you just avoid buying this for now. Uh, you, you, just, you can, you can, um, you can get away with uh, not buying all that stuff right, right away. So the next thing I do is I go to this guy Hodley Smod and I make him my my merchant here, other than Creeper. Uh, I I like to get him high here because I like I come back to Caldera a lot and I need to repair a lot of equipment here. So I'm gonna repair every single thing here. Now that basically just uh, did that stuff and I'm do I did that because I'm planning on buying almost all new armor right away. Um, the main reason I bought all that armor in Sedanine was because of the Dark Brotherhood guy. I knew he'd attack me. But this is the kind of first place that has a lot of really good armor uh, that's really easy to get to. So for example, this Duke's Guard Silver Curious, its armor rating is 26. If you look at what I have, it's only 13. So it's twice as good. So we're going to buy really everything that we can all of the highest armor rating. Uh, Templar bracers, uh, some boots. We're gonna buy um, this little tower shield here. These chain left pauldron, right pauldron. Um, yeah. So uh, that, but notice it costs a lot. So creeper is instrumental in this armor upgrade. Uh, this is. We can probably get it to about. You know. I'm gonna guess about 500, maybe 510. I'm gonna go to 505 due to our disposition with him. But that's a pretty key thing uh, is getting this armor. It'll protect you basically for a really long time. And at this point, you kind of have a baseline. Uh, this armor is like the baseline. You have one of each um, piece of armor, and You'll just be upgrading it piecemeal from here on. You won't be able to go to a place like this. Hail and welcome, or, friend. Like, a big Hail. Of good armor. So, because I'm over encumbered, I'm gonna sell a little bit of it. So maybe this iron shield or uh, this gauntlet. And now I'm gonna go back to Creeper and sell this the armor back to him. 
and that will hopefully offset, offset some of that cost. Yeah, so that's basically, um, that's it really for the weapons and armor at this point of the game. Uh, there are two more spells that I really like to get, so I'm going to go get those. But it's pr you're pretty well set for now. You have... Okay, I'm stuck here. Sometimes you get stuck. You ha we, have, we have access to Creeper. We have really strong, a good armor rating for our level and like our skill levels. Um, and we have uh, a very, very, very good weapon. And yes. everything else, you know, you just upgrade it piecemeal, little by little. We're going to go to the Guild of Mages here. And I'm going to take this opportunity to bribe this person because I'm going to be using her a lot. And it'll end up saving me money in the long run. And this is also really useful for speech graph, so I'll be right back. Okay, uh, I'm back, and that took a lot of money. I ended up having to do a few uh, hundred gold packages. Her, her skill went all the way down, so I actually spent about, you know, 800 gold on this woman. She's definitely not worth that much, but it went all the way down, so I wasn't actually even able to travel with her, so I needed to get her back to... That and then once once I did that, I felt might as well get to a hundred. So I got her all the way to a hundred. Now we're gonna go to Vivek. I'm listening. And in Vivek, we're back in the Mages Guild. Uh, and I will show you a little bit about Vivek while we're here, but I won't, you know, spend too much time on it. I think this woman sells scrolls. We want. Uh, we're gonna want um, a couple of scrolls for the next part. Here, just get her disposition up a bit. If I can get it to 90, that'd be good. Okay, actually, maybe 100. It's sort of addicting to do this. Okay, we got it all the way. So, we want to get uh, a few of these Fiji Eyes gem feeder scrolls. We don't need that many. Uh, but we want to get Divine Intervention for sure. And we want to get, uh, uh, they usually have these undoozies un unhinging. Yeah. So we want those. I'll get, I'll get a, one of the gem feeder one also. They're expensive, so don't worry too much about those. So this is because our, our magic skill right now frankly sucks. So to get those it's useful. We're going to probably end up using those a little bit before our magic still gets any good. Uh, I'm listening. Now, go ahead. we're in this, this area of the Vivek. It's the Foreign Quarter Plaza. So the way Vivek works yes, Outland. is it's made up of like seven cantons. And they're basically just these floating... I'm going to wait a couple hours so that you can see in the, in the daytime. But they're these floating cities almost like each one of these is like the size of a city in, in the game so the foreign quarter is one of the cantons and you'll see here you know each one of these little squares is a new is a different canton so there's the Redoran canton there's the Hlalu canton Telvani canton foreign quarter uh, the arena canton uh, St. Olm, St. Delin, te the temple it is huge Vivek is no joke and each of these cantons has a plaza area like this as well as an underworks which are like sewers and like mini dungeons and they also have um wasteworks level and some of them you'll see that this one over here that i'm looking at is two leveled the one we're on is actually three levels so that actually has an upper and a lower waste so we're wanting to go to the upper wasteworks of the foreign quarter uh i'm gonna just I'm gonna briefly, you know, pop in here. Vivek is large, and I think that like exploring Vivek is like a video, pretty much. So I'm just gonna go to talk to this woman, talk to her about spells. She has this, these two spells we want Mark and Paul. Uh, that's all we really care about from her. Um, 
another spell that's useful just to keep your eye out for uh, our um, night eye that's really good for enchanting and stuff so that you can see really easily at night um, but other than that we're basically set um, these are the kind of core spells of the game uh, paralysis is good like all these things I will eventually want to enchant on something so whether that be a, a piece of armor or a weapon or um, like these amulets that I bought or, or like a ring or something I want to get um, you know mark on uh, on something I want to get a feather uh, a, a constant effect feather spell so that my weight is no longer a problem doozy's open door I'm gonna do that first uh, water walking, water breathing. So you see what I'm saying? Like it's really these are the these are the spells that kind of will make or break you uh, while playing this game. So and levitate is really useful to have like a really strong one of those so that you can levitate a lot. So now we're gonna go back to um, okay, and these guys are called ordinators, and the the we're armor they're wearing you. is called scum. Indoril armor. They're, they're total jerks. I hate them. But this is the best medium armor in the game. Uh, or at least in Morrowind, like in the vanilla game. And the problem with wearing it is that if you wear it in Vivek, they will attack you on sight. And they're not easy to kill, needless to say. And you'll, you, you'll end up fighting lots of those. So, it's probably why I don't like medium armor. That is really good armor, and it's not that hard to get Like once you can kill those guys. But, it's not worth it because you get attacked constantly while you're here and it's just a bummer killing those guys is actually a really really good use of uh, is, is a good way to get gold for creeper uh, is you just kill those guys loot all their armor and then and then um, sell it to him and they're really easy to taunt because they don't like you much so you know you can taunt them into fighting you and then you can kill them uh, once you do that, just loot their body and get their armor. So I'm going to show you this little thing also, just briefly touch on it. Uh, Vivek is so large that it has its own mini fast travel system. These guys here will gondola you around, so you come to this speak. guy and you'll travel, and you can t he'll take you to one of these cantons for a little price, like a tiny amount of gold. Um, and that's useful because you come in to Vivek from one of three ways. You come in from Mage's Guild, which is how we got here. You can also come in through that boat over there and the Silt Strider. Uh, those are the three main forms of fast travel, and you need to use all three of those to get where you need to go. So, for example, Caldera. The only way to get to Caldera is, is through the Mage's Guild. Um, the only way to get to a lot of areas like around, like on the east coast here are through the boats, and a lot of the only ways to get to like a lot of these places like in the interior over here is through silt striders so you need to like use all the fast travel available to to get there and that's why I like to bribe all the fast travel people as fast as as soon as possible just so that anytime I need to get somewhere for a quest I can just easily fast travel there or near nearby and and do that so I'm gonna take this boat to the next city we're gonna go to, which is Kevin. I'm gonna bribe this guy because he's the boatman of Vivek, which is a big city. I've spent a lot of time here. Sure. And I'll be back. Okay, we got his uh, disposition up to the max. Now I'm gonna take the boat to Ebenhard at 6 GP. Now that's because Ebenhard's actually really, really close, and you don't necessarily need to actually boat there. Uh, I'm doing it just because, but it's not, it wouldn't be a terrible idea just not to do that. Um, you can only reach Ebonheart by boat. Uh, and Ebonheart is like, right, so you notice it's just right here. Vivek, where I was just a minute ago, was here. All I have to do is just walk down here. It's pretty easy to do. Uh, and I will be doing that in the next video. Uh, but not right now. I'm gonna go ahead and bribe this guy and I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. I got him up. I'm actually gonna travel with him. I just wanted to bribe him for future reference. Uh, Ebonheart has two things we need. So, where are you from? First of those things is, if you remember, we have this quest that is still active, and that's the reason I haven't rested yet. 
we need to talk to this guy, Apelis Macius here. And I'm gonna And that's the first thing I want to do. Now that I've gotten, did, done a little bit of globe trotting and gotten the first round of items I think are really useful, um, then that's what, that's what I want to do. Uh, the next set of items I really like to get, I need that um, this amulet that Ch enchanted to get because I want to have do a lot of lo like opening of serious locks. So uh, once I do that, there there's a couple items that are kind of like a pair. That I love to get because they really, really speed up traveling time. So here's a pillow spacious. Anyway, I'll, I'll continue with what I was saying. So, you know, he's talking about, okay, what's this about the Dark Brotherhood? Perhaps you've been attacked. That's bad business. I don't know who it is that wants you dead, and I don't want to know. Dark Brotherhood activity here in Vardenville is almost unheard of, but I know they have a large contingent back on the mainland. So he's saying, okay, there's very little here, so you need to go to the mainland of Morrowind. Yeah, and Mournhole itself, actually. If you're feeling particularly suicidal, you could check it out for yourself. Of course, it's not easy to get there these days because of the blight. Boats from Barden Vardenfell are turned away immediately. There's one way you might get there, though. Speak with Asin Rain about transport to Mournhole. She might be able to help you out. Uh, Asin Rain is a mage who arrived in Vardenfell the same time I did. Special appointment to Duke Dren himself. Nice woman and a powerful mage. You should be able to find her in the Grand Council Chambers. And that's what you'll need if you're hellbent on tracking these Dark Brotherhood assassins you claim have visited you. So, right. So now we have, we, we got the next step of this quest. We have talked to that guy. And we need to go talk to this woman I've seen rain. She's just right over here. Luckily it's not I'm listening. really far away like the last part of this quest. So, she's right here. And we just talked to her about that. Say, hey, Dark Brotherhood, horrible people, stay clear of them. We'll say, transport to Mornhold. You wish to go to the mainland? That's highly irregular. I'm sure you've heard that they've tr restricted travel to Mornhold. They've been a bit worried about the blight. What's your reason for wanting to go to the city? If you say none of your business, she won't let you go. So I'm just going to say this. I actually don't really know what happens if you say none of your business. I suspect it's similar to like what I did with Chaos Cassades. Oh my, I can see why you'd want to get that cleared up. That's dangerous business, though. I can't say I'd be happy to send you off on that sort of fool's errand. If you're sure, though, I suppose I can oblige you. If you need to return to Vardenfell, though, speak to F.A. in the Royal Palace. Take care, friend. Those people are not to be taken lightly. I'll send you there when we finish, finish speaking. So she actually sends you there for free. And you can go to and from Morn Mornhold here for free. Mornhold. Now, City this of is light. the tribunal City of area, magic. and tribunal is for much higher level characters than us. This war uh, it can be useful to come questions. here early on because you can find some decent items around the city, uh, and exploring it is, is interesting. But you can't actually really make any progress in the main quest of of, of this area for a long time. Um, and I'll be coming back here, uh, really probably not for a very very long time. Maybe I'll need like an item here or something, or want like an item here to improve myself. But that's very unlikely, and I'm probably gonna wait until I'm done with the Morrowind main quest to even come here. So I might as well talk to this, with this person. Uh, this is how you finish off the Dark Brotherhood attacks quest, I think. I want to make sure I haven't finished it off. Yeah, so I'll just I'll finish off this quest with her, with Fata, and she transports you to Vardenfell for free. So. So this this all is like background. I'm gonna talk to this person again once we're actually ready to start the more uh, the tribunal stuff. Um, it's really sh this person is super useful uh, for just finding out a lot of information about Mornhold and stuff like that. Uh, so that's nice. Yeah. Okay. It's down. There's all the stuff. There's sewers. This king Helseth. Okay. Ethan Lethan, Forensia, I'm just going to click everything, I don't really know. Uh, I can't remember exactly what, okay. Gavastrin, Royal Guard. Uh, So I talked to him about stuff. I think you might need to actually talk to Justice Just as never yeah. sleep. I don't know why you'd want to go looking for those demons. Some say they live in the sewers beneath the Great Bazaar. 
So that should have ended the, yeah, that ended the spell, the quest. So now we know where they're coming from. They're coming from the sewers in the Great Bazaar. Uh, I personally don't care. I just wanted to end that quest so that the, the attacks will stop. Um, and, you know, that's, that's the only thing I was interested in there. So I'm going to go all the way back to Vardenfell and I won't be back here for a very long time. Okay, now I'm about to I'm about done, but what the next thing want? I want to do and the last thing I want to do is go out here and then into this imperial chapel. Can I help and you? Welcome out? to our home for the next few videos. Uh, this is the headquarters of the imperial cult in Morrowind. Um, and I'll talk a lot more about them later. <coughs> but for now, I'm going to go down here and rest up, and I will see you next time. And next time we're going to start Imperial Cult Quest, and we'll just we'll we'll be talking with these gentlemen a lot, as well as the people upstairs. Uh, so I hope this was enjoyable to you. And now we're pretty strong. Uh, we have this dark. I still have this Dark Brotherhood armor. I can sell the Creeper for more money if I need it, and uh, I have this Mark spell. And my my I'm gonna. See, these, there are these beds here. I'm going to use them enough until I can actually drop this mark spell here. And the mark spell will basically, what it does is it, it tells you, okay, uh, this is where you're going to teleport if you use this recall spell. Um, a lot of, generally I have one of three places I put the mark spell. I'll put it next to a quest giver that you I'm want in the something, of friend? I'll put it next to that, those storage crates there in Balmora, or I'll put it next to Creeper. Uh, and the reason I put it next to Creeper or those storage crates is because a lot of times I'll be in, un, encumbered when I uh, go there. Um, the nice thing, one of the nice things about, okay, well, uh, uh, you know what, I'm actually going to just talk about this next time. So, I will see you later and have a great day.